What's up, y'all? Phil James. Today is 1st of September, 2017. All right. Finally, after, you know, what seems like two full weeks of Harvey decimating Texas, it has finally started to, you know, move northeastern up towards the Ohio River Valley. Yeah. It's a good thing that it's finally getting out of Texas. They've had enough. Um, and if you have not seen the footage, I highly recommend you go look. It is horrifying. Flooded so deep in some spots. You know, once again, a lot of people are complete and total believers that Harvey was a complete and total manipulated storm. And I could not agree more. Not even more. None. Like... I could not agree more. Everything about Harvey was strange. Okay? Whether you're referring to the way it's, it strengthened, the way it moved, and then the way it stopped right there, right after going through Rockport with the eye wall and whatnot. Right after it hit Rockport, it just stopped. You know? Two mile per hour movement as a whole. That's absolute insanity never seen that before in the 30 years I've been alive so completely agree it was manipulated and then just two days ago on the 30th NASA test fired that SLS rocket and their wet surface air cooler sends all that evaporated water vapor straight up directly into the the sky and that meets up with Harvey aftermath as it moves northeast so they just basically added more and more water vapor so more and more rain is expected to come now because of that okay next topic I've mentioned it in the previous video actually I've mentioned it in every video about Harvey why would it have been Tex or Texas targeted well Texas has a very massive um, supply of gold backed that they could back currency off of Texas has a bunch of patriots that are ready to go against the Fed if need be Texas has a lot of gun owners and Texas also you know has threatened to secede from America and in the Jade Helm map Texas is considered hostile territory I know I've said all this at least three or four times in the past few days but I say it for anybody new that views anything that I put out. So Texas, Utah, Southern California, all considered hostile territory to the federal government due to that Jade Helm map. There's your proof if you need to go look it up. So, gold. Oh, and like I said, two days after the eclipse, Operation Black Sky started, and that was a, that's a military exercise to test a large scale power grid blackout. Okay, well, Texas just so happens to have their very own power grid, so why not test it there, right? In a state that's already considered hostile territory. That's exactly what I've believed, and that's exactly what I'm still saying. Okay, so now, you know, after Texas, you know, has threatened a couple times to secede from America and everything else. We have FEMA National Guard down there, okay? Both agencies, both groups are down there. FEMA, apparently, is blocking all these roads so nobody can go south. Apparently, FEMA just stopped civilian rescues. So that means, you know, the Cajun Navy can't go in there anymore and rescue people. Um, strange, kind of. I mean, I understand, you know, FEMA saying that the civilians out there are trying to rescue people are getting stranded themselves and it's causing more issues for the organized Coast Guard or the organized FEMA branch but you know what In my opinion if you're a civilian and you're out there saving lives you know that you're risking your life so if something happens you either got to deal with it figure it out yourself or you're gonna have to go to the back of the line and wait to be rescued whatever the case may be you know what I mean they felt the need because they live there and Southern hospitality is very real. They're going to help their neighbors. You know what I'm saying? So, kind of strange that they stopped civilian rescues. Let's carry on, though. 
So I mentioned this also in another video earlier in the past week or two. Hurricane Irma. It was not a hurricane um, originally. It was just a tropical storm Wednesday. And by Thursday, yesterday, it hit Category 3. So when I first heard of this, heard about this storm, there was a... Uh, all kinds of mapping and you know all kinds of uh, radar saying that you know it could hit category three which obviously it has but I also looked into it and I was seeing it and you know they're referring to being able to see a very uh, set eye already in the storm and it's 7,000 miles off the coast this one's more normal you know Harvey completely weird manipulated completely seemed like total fake geoengineered storm um, this one I still personally believe it's gonna be manipulated um, because we have weather terrorists and they are very capable of manipulating just about any type of storm they they like um, so yeah at least this hurricane though this tropical storm turned hurricane is coming from Africa and it's right there where the Bermuda High is, that real high pressure system or whatever. And, you know, it's actually acting normal. So, that at least seems a little better. But, this thing, in my opinion, is going to hit a Category 5 with no issue. And if they manipulate it, there's a good chance they could make it go off the scale. Hit a Category 7. Make it, I mean, literally, it's like turning an amp up to 11. Like, it just doesn't happen. So... That's my point. Um, I believe this thing's going to hit a Cat 5. And I believe this thing is going to smash the East Coast. Because look at the date. Like I said, September 1st right now. This is about 10 days out. And they said that yesterday. They said about 10 to 12 days yesterday when I looked into it more in depth. And today is the 1st. So now it's picked up speed. <clears throat> It's moving about 60 miles per hour right now. Yesterday, when I was looking at it, it was moving, I think they said 10. Yes, 10 miles per hour, and now it's moving 60. So my personal belief right now, putting this out there, it's a prediction that I'm making. I believe this storm is going to crush the east coast of America on September 11th. Ironic? <laughs> no, not at all. More like symbolic. But here, I want to go ahead and show this video. In the real Atlantic, quick. it's called Hurricane Irma. It is now a Category 3 storm. CNN meteorologist Chad Myers has the latest forecast. Chad, where is this one heading? Well, it's in the middle of the Atlantic, as you said, in the middle of nowhere. That's good. But it is heading to the west, maybe toward Puerto Rico, St. Croix, that area up there. Now, the cone becomes very wide by the time we get out there, but it's 115 miles per hour. As I stood here yesterday talking about Harvey, this was barely a tropical storm, but it exploded overnight, and now it is a Category 3 forecast to become a Category 4, 140 mile per hour storm by Wednesday of next week. Let me take you to the forecast track for Irma. It's way out here, way away from land. But we're going to go with the European model right now. Very close to the island sometime Wednesday or Thursday. Now I need you to think about this. This is 10 days away. The storm could be here or it could be here. That's how far and how big the errors are in these computer models by the time we get 10 days out. Let's compare the European to the American model, because we always do. The American model much closer to land, the European model much farther into the Atlantic. Let's hope this is what we call a big gutter ball, missing absolutely everything, missing Bermuda, missing North Carolina. We'll know about that probably by the end of the weekend when the models get clearer, but right now it's a long way away. I just need you to know there's a Cat 4 hurricane possible in the Atlantic. All right, so what do you guys think? Because I'm a firm believer that this thing is going to hammer the east coast of America. And I, I mean, seriously, if, it, if this is to go northeast, like, or well, the hurricane itself will be moving northwest. But if it's to hit the northeast of America, like right around Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts and everything... We are looking at absolute devastation. All right. 
because once again this thing was literally a tropical storm on Wednesday and by Thursday it already hit cat 3 and now they're saying it's going to be a cat 4 by Wednesday of next week. I think it's going to be a cat 5. If it intensified from a tropical storm literally from Wednesday morning till Thursday and it hit from tropical storm to cat 3 in that 24 hour span what do you think it's going to hit in 10 days? So, I mean, yeah, it's 10 days out, but it's also 10 days out over the water, over the Atlantic. 10 days of building up its, you know, pressure, 10 days of building up its power. Because as it's over the Atlantic and going through the Bermuda high pressure system right there over the Atlantic, it's just going to keep building and building and building. So, it is very likely... This is about to be one of the absolute biggest hurricanes to ever strike America. And I actually saw something the other day. It was yesterday, I believe. I looked all over for it, could not find it. Um, they were talking about all the hurricanes. They said all the hurricanes with the first letter I in the name have been catastrophic hurricanes when they make landfall. So this news channel went through and he's like, all right, so we've had 36 hurricanes that started with I. Out of those 36, 13 of them made landfall. Okay, so there's that number, 13. And then he said seven of them were like massive hurricanes, like category three and above. So this is already considered a massive hurricane. Starts with an I too, and yeah, so I, I'm not a meteorologist. I don't live on the coast, so I don't deal with hurricanes. We get the aftermath sometimes here and where I'm at, but nothing crazy, just rain, you know. So I'm not a I'm not a professional by any means. I'm just telling you what I think due to the way things work on this earth, alright? The way the it just seems like irony, but you know, it's totally something else. So once again, my personal belief. September 11th, this thing's going to be a Cat 5 hurricane, and it's going to be smashing the east coast of America. So, I just wanted to make a video on it. I've seen a couple other ones. Um, I meant to make a video two days ago when I first saw it, but I didn't get around to doing it. Um, yeah. Let's check this out too. And it is September 1st. It's hurricane season. Hurricane Harvey's threat now spreading to Louisiana and Tennessee. Yep. And as Texas struggles to recover from the catastrophic flooding it's experiencing right now, a new storm is rapidly gaining strength over the Atlantic. Is this a misprint of the teleprompter? No. Hurricane Irma now upgraded to a Category 3. Wow. Meteorologist Janice Dean is live in studio tracking its path. I'm convinced she never sleeps. Janice, good morning. <laughs> We're going to be watching uh, several storms in the next uh, week or so. This is what's left of Harvey. I just want to make mention we had several reports of tornadoes, a damaging one in Tuscaloosa yesterday. Now we're going to see the remnants move across the Ohio River Valley and the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast. Upwards of four to six inches still possible with this system, and we're unfortunately going to see a part of Harvey as we get into the long weekend for the Northeast. Hurricane Irma, all eyes on Irma and will be for the next several days. Uh, it has the potential to become one of the strongest storms we have seen. I think we could actually be up to a Cat 5 in the next five days. Not saying it'll make landfall as a Cat 5, but, you know, strengthening to that would be pretty amazing. Here's the steering pattern. We've got the Bermuda High out here. If this high remains strong, then the path is going to move more westward. If the high breaks down, then we're going to see a curve and the east coast could, could be impacted. So those are the steering currents we're going to watch. Here's the European model. This one is has been very good, very reliable. Heading through Tuesday, watching the Lesser Antilles, certainly Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba, and the Bahamas, but looks like this curves and comes very close to the southeast coast. And if I could, real quick, I just want to show you the GFS. The GFS is now in agreement that we think the east coast could be impacted, more likely perhaps than Florida or the Gulf of Mexico. This one brings, brings it very close to the mid-Atlantic on Sunday. So I'm not saying that this is the outcome. I am just saying be... See, predictively programming. She's not saying it's the outcome, but more than likely... 
it's going to hit the northern Atlantic coast of America. See, now, once again, September 11th is right here, 10 days away right now, okay? And this storm has been building up. Um, I personally believe this is going to slam the east coast of America on September 11th. And it's going to be a cat four at minimum, okay? At minimum, because right now it's a three, and it did that in a 24-hour span from tropical storm at seven or from what? It's 70 and below mile per hour, from 70 and below mile per hour winds to what is it now? Cat three is like what one up to up to 140 or lower, just under something like that, and it's there right now. This is going to hit America, and we need to be ready over here. Um, just for the record, I say it all the time, I'm here in central Ohio, okay? It is freezing outside right now where I'm at, and <clears throat> it's quite windy. So we are getting this cold front that's right out front of the Harvey aftermath right now. Like I said, Harvey is moving up towards the Ohio River Valley, and it's blowing this cold-ass air right into central Ohio. Um, just wanted to go ahead and throw it out there. Um, but yeah, I'll get, go ahead and let this continue. Prepared. Don't want to scare. Be prepared. East Coast, Florida, Gulf Coast. And then we have another one behind this one coming off the coast of Africa right now that will be a hurricane. Wow. Wow. Another yep. one. The good thing is, though, you have September 10th upon the graphic, which means we have 10 days to prepare for Absolutely. the Absolutely. That's a very good point, Ainsley. We have time to prepare people. And okay. you don't want it to hit anywhere, but the previous projections had shown it going into the Gulf, potentially the same we, spot. Listen, so we still... A little bit of good news there. We, a week out, we don't have enough confidence. All I want people to do is know what to do if you have a hurricane on sure. your doorstep. Right. I'm for leaving in the ocean. I would prefer that. I would prefer big waves. All right, so as you can see, this is looking pretty hellish. Pretty hellish. Let's see what they have to say. They ripped up waterlogged drywall and carpets. Destroyed furniture and debris piled up on the streets. We're out of here. My wife's from San Antonio, and uh, she doesn't want to go through this anymore, and we're done. Calls for help are diminishing. The police department performed just three high water rescues between Wednesday night and Thursday morning. We received about 30 missing persons reports since the storm began. We have cleared 11 of those already. We still have 19 cases that we are still looking for. Houston's airports reopened for commercial flights. Some public transportation services also resumed. The mayor says the Toyota Center shelter will likely be closed by end of day. The people still there will be moved to the convention center, where 8,000 remain, down from a high of 10,000. Don't bet against Houston. Don't bet against Harris County. Uh, we're coming back, and we're coming back strong. DeMarco Morgan joins us now from Houston. So, DeMarco, I see that the water is receding, at least in some neighborhoods. Uh, you've been in Texas since the very start of Harvey. Can you describe the scene now? Well, now water, as you said, it, they are starting to recede uh, all across town. Some of the interstates and major roadways are now back open, which is a good thing. Some are still closed because you have little pockets of water that are uh, on parts of the interstate. But uh, we're in Buffalo Bayou. This is a park that's not too far from downtown. You can see the skyline right behind me. But uh, just look up to that uh, staircase right there, Anne-Marie. Uh, the water was up to the very top, very close to that staircase. And that just gives you a sense of just how high the water was just in this area alone. So, again, it has started to recede. It's still a little muddy and messy out here and officials are warning people residents now to be very careful about the water out here uh, especially when it comes to driving uh, on the roadways don't try to drive through any water because it's still extremely dangerous you may not know uh, how deep it is also watch out for uh, wildlife potential wildlife in the waters and the chemicals uh, that are also in the water as well because it can make you sick yeah still so huh. many dangers out there um, we saw from your story yeah, that that's people not are leaving to mention, the shelters. Some of them spill. are starting to There's clear out, but the fire. certainly many people will not be able to go home. I can't remember what that chemical plant was called, but yeah, it was so on fire. It had like a going? fire, and 
smoke well, right fluming out. Hearing that uh, FEMA and some of the private organizations are making it possible for those evacuees to head to hotels uh, and some of the other uh, places that are shelters. Uh, we saw a number of people packing up their belongings, what they could salvage uh, and save from the floods and make it to some of the hotels that we were standing by uh, downtown near our place where we are staying. And uh, a lot of people are also getting in contact with their relatives. You got to keep in mind the rain was coming down so fast. The flood happened uh, extremely fast as well for people who didn't have an escape plan. So many have been able to get in contact with close relatives or friends that they could just go stay with for a couple of days. So I think for the next couple of days, people will also be trying to find uh, a, a temporary place to stay uh, with the hopes of returning to their homes. But many homes are damaged or uh, destroyed completely. Yeah. So thanks a lot to Marco Morgan. Appreciate your reporting from Houston. The damaged Arkema chemical plant in Crosby, Texas, could see go. more explosions over the next few days. A series of fires broke out early Thursday after the valve in a storage container burst. David Begno has been following the story and has more for us from Houston. With everything that's going on here in Houston, emergency officials are keeping an eye on even the next hurricane, Irma. Where's that one going to go? But the radar right now that's important is Houston. And thankfully, it is clear, at least right now. You know, those sheriff's deputies we told you about yesterday? The guy has some nice eyeliner on. Yesterday's explosion. They went to the hospital in respiratory distress. They have been released. That's the good news. The federal agency that looks into explosions like this, the U.S. Chemical Safety Board, has launched an investigation into what's going on at that plant. There were no new explosions overnight, but emergency officials say more are likely imminent. From above the Arkema chemical plant, we saw a fire continuing to burn Thursday morning, hours after it began. By late afternoon, the flames appeared to be out. But Arkema's warning, there is evidence suggesting that other trailers will soon burn. Satellite images from before and after the flooding really tell the story. The water knocked out power that's needed to prevent unstable organic peroxide compounds from overheating and catching fire. We have been in a defensive posture holding a perimeter around the facility to make sure that our citizens are safe and that our environment is protected. The plan now? Let it burn. Authorities evacuated people within a mile and a half radius of the facility. This should have never happened. They should have had backups in case they lost power. The company did have backup generators, but it's unclear whether they were protected. Oh. If you need an interview, sir, excuse me, we have tried, we, no, 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 we, we tried to get in touch with your company yesterday repeatedly. Okay, company executive Richard Renard agreed to take some of our questions one on one, but admitted he didn't have all the answers, including this one from a local resident. Uh, were the uh, generators elevated? I don't know the uh, location. I, I, I just don't know the specifics of where the generators happen to be located. An inspection last year by the Occupational Safety How does an and Health owner not know where the generators are? Violations ultimately resulting in more than $91,000 in fines. But a former OSHA official tells CBS News none of that would probably be relevant to the situation we're dealing with now. Of course it wouldn't. Mr. Renard says the company had not only... I just want to say, how would he not know where the generators were at his plant? You know what I'm saying? He's the one that gets okays everything. You know, he's the one that makes all the money. He's the one that spends all the money. How would he not know? And two, has anybody heard any updates on the Bay City nuclear plant? That was the one I was worried about. And then you have the Arkham, or whatever the hell that place is called, leaking organic peroxide, whatever they just said. So, you know, we have two, two major chemical problems, possibly, in Texas. And you know, you already know that if the nuclear plant is seeping out anything radioactive, they're going to keep it on the download the same way they did in Fukushima. They don't want to frighten people. They don't want to scare people. And uh, they don't want to make the catastrophe already or seem worse than what it already is. So it's hard to tell. But if you know anything about the Bay City, um, the Bay City power plant, the nuclear power plant, throw it in those comments. Um, I'm about to cut this video. I'm trying to keep it relatively short, and this is not short. So I'll let a few more seconds play. One backup plan, but two and three others, and they all failed. By the way, the Environmental Protection Agency says they have not detected any toxicity in the air from what is being emitted uh, because of these explosions. And you may find this controversial. Don't believe that. The local sheriff here in Harris County has said that he's been told by experts 
what's coming from that plant is no more dangerous than standing around a campfire. Anne Marie? David, Definitely don't you. believe that. Well, a new hurricane is gaining strength in the Atlantic Ocean. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said Hurricane Irma is now a Category 3 storm. Officials also warned that Irma is expected to be extremely dangerous for the next several days. So CBS News weather producer David Parkinson joins us now to talk about Irma. We don't really want to hear about another storm, but now we have Irma turning up. Tell me about the storm. What do I need to know? So right now it is a storm in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So here's the satellite. Here's Hurricane Irma. It's 900 miles off the coast of Africa and 1,600 miles from the Antilles. So it's out over. What's up with these people That's they're the using news, right? and to so interview? For the next four or five days is Last dude had eyeliner. This dude, what the uh, hell? It's going to stay Don't over get it. empty water. The question really becomes. Once it gets closer to the Antilles, gets closer to Puerto Rico towards yeah. the later end of the week, that's when we start having a chance where it could impact land and really uh, um, cause some damage. Well, this is what I've learned from listening to people like you, that a storm like this over water, especially warm water, feeds its intensity. So it's a Category 3 now. It's not going to stay a Category 3. No. So not. the official National Hurricane Center forecast takes it up to a Category 4. You can see in that graphic there of 140 mile an hour winds by Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. There are some models that are saying this could get to a Category 5. So it really comes down to this question of... Category 5? Yeah, Category 5. Wow. So it's hitting it 5. Max out the scale. And then we're it's talking about a whole five. new set of it creates its own atmosphere. It's a whole different situation. Yeah. But um, over the next couple of days, it went from a tropical storm to a Category 2 hurricane in a span of six hours. It do almost doubled in wind speed from 60 mile an hour winds to 115 mile an hour winds in a period of 24 hours. So this storm really is supercharged and ready to go. Yeah, okay, she sounds scary, Irma, uh, but she's only going to be really, really scary if she is headed towards land. So what are the models? What are the models showing? Right, so if, if you, uh, I set up this nice little graphic that we have there. So there yeah. are your possible options, right? So it could go into the Gulf of Mexico, it could make landfall on the East Coast, or it could recurve out to sea. So worst case scenario, that bottom half of, uh, my, uh, of Florida and these, these Gulf states are going to get nervous. Potentially. So the, the good news is that bottom option there, the one into the Gulf of Mexico, is at least as model runs have come along, are less likely. So it has gone from a, a somewhat decent chance to, to less of a chance. That middle chance right now is still unfortunately the most likely. The problem is we don't know where it could hit in the U.S. It could go anywhere from pretty much Montauk to Miami at this point. Wow. Um, so that's really unclear. The big question is going to be the setup, right? So we've got um, a ridge of high pressure and that's over the Atlantic Ocean. It's a Bermuda Do you see all the storms the behind them? Is, or well, on the radar there behind? That map there? That's the There's a few pressure. more how far following. How far does that ridge hit? And how far down does it go? And that kind of will dictate the track past where the National Hurricane Center has it. Then you see that little blue thing in that upper left-hand corner of that graphic? That's a trough, and that's the dip in the jet stream. The timing of that and where that uh, slides through will also impact of, of where it's going to send the storm. Okay. It could be too late. It could basically be a non-factor, and then the high takes over, and that's a really bad situation for land. Okay, just remind us, when does hurricane season end? Hurricane season ends on November 30th, and the peak of hurricane season is September 10th, which... Uh, Somewhat ironically, is uh, around the time where we'd be looking for land. You hear that? Somewhat ironically? Is it ironic? Or is it symbolic? Well, or is it is Mexico made to happen Tropical that way? Storm Lydia went through popular tourist destinations at the tip of the Baja California Peninsula. Oh, yeah, Lydia, that's on the other side. Huge in storm shelters at the Los Cabos resorts. Lydia even caused flooding that briefly closed the airport in Mexico City. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says the storm could produce as much as 8 to 12 inches of rain, threatening flash floods and landslides. A whole lot of bad weather out there. Coming up after a quick break, a Georgia police officer is caught on camera making a disturbing comment at a traffic stop. All right, y'all. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. I just wanted to get the main points out, and you heard them. And you saw it, so. Alright, guys. These days we're in right now. Very, very obvious. Very obvious. It's clearly the last days. So, everybody, hang on. Buckle your seatbelts. Pray. Do what you gotta do. Become a good person. Be a better person. There's always, always room to improve. So, do what you need to do. Alright y'all, 
if you made it watch this video I appreciate it leave me a like uh, subscribe if you have not hit that bell go ahead and share I appreciate it alright y'all Phil James peace